he was staying as a special guest of Khan Bahadur Mushtaq Ahmad Gurmani. And Gurmani was living in, in that building. Okay. Khan Bahadur Mushtaq Ahmad Gurmani uh, was the uh, uh, director of technical training, but he was Khan Bahadur and a, a prominent uh, Muslim leader. So he, 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 was, he was staying in his house as a special guest. Free independence, Rafurullah Khan, brother of Khan, Baha Abdul Rafar Khan, an Indian member of the Vice's Council was one of the occupants of the South. During the freedom movement, eminent national leader Jawaral. like Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, Pandit Govind, Balak Pant, Mulan Azad, here, stayed, stayed here. here on their visit to Simla for discussion with the British. You see, the prejudices are so strong. Prejudices are so strong that this is the only name omitted. Whose name? Ambedkar. You see, when you mention uh, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, Pandit Govind Vadapan, and Maulana Azad uh. stayed here. Uh. Ambedkar stayed here. And they haven't mentioned it? No. Prejudices are so strong. So you met him here. Can you tell us about when exactly, which year probably you met him and I how long you waited? Can you recollect I think, that? I think I've told you many times yeah. that I waited for six to seven hours outside uh, the building and he was staying here as uh, he had come um, as uh, uh, Labour member. Labour minister. Uh, Labour member of the Vice Executive Council. And his ministry was here. Okay. In uh, chamber. Okay. Uh, Which year was this when you met him? 43. 1943. Mm -hmm. But they, they didn't mention his name. <laughs> Prejudices are so strong, and I've got a bitter experience in my life. I was born in 1927, 27, okay. 23rd of April, mm -hmm. because you, you can add 23 with 4 mm -hmm. and you get 27. Mm -hmm. I was born in 27. Mm -hmm. I belong to an untouchable community which is untouchable among the untouchable. Which is? Swippers. My father was Randeta, but mother was uh, from uh, a Muslim, semi-Muslim family, and her name was Sheraton. And who 
else is there in the picture? This is my younger brother who was no more, and this is I, and this is my sister, because she's already died. And, and what is this here? This is a ground form. It was fashionable to uh, purchase ground form in those days. My father was well off. Yeah. He belonged to a, uh, an affluent family. His father was a conductor in army, and he supplied working class, I mean, uh, sweeping class in uh, sweepers and cabins okay. to the army. Yeah. After his death, his elder son took over, and uh, my brother, my father, and his younger brother, they came to an ancestral home in Simla. And uh, he started life as a, as a, uh, as a watchman uh, in the Wallace Towers at three rupees a month. Konsa hai ancestral property? Yes, it is. I was very fond of studying. At home, at home, uh, the tutor came, Malvi, mm -hmm. and uh, he taught me and my sister. What would the Malvi teach? Malvi, he taught us Urdu. Urdu, okay. And we went to school and... Uh, what to school was this? Cantonment Board Primary School. Okay. When my father went uh, to get me admitted, then uh, what he wrote, yeah. because you know, he was not Hindu, uh -huh. so he wrote what was popular name, Kakru. What? Kakru. Kakru. What does it mean? Well, it means uh, it's the name of the Swiss. Uh -huh. You know, the teachers used to come from DAV school and SD school mm. and Butler school, mm. uh, asking the headmaster to mm. recommend the best boys mm. and they would take. Mm. So the boy who stood first in the class, mm. he was taken to DAV school. DAV school, okay. And I was taken to, I was second, mm. he was taken to SD school. Okay. But in SD school, Sanandaram school, there was a, a period for teaching religious, I mean, uh, religion. Mm, mm, mm. And uh, uh, we were five boys, mm -hmm. one Christian, mm. two Muslims, mm. two untouchables, mm -hmm. uh, three untouchables. Mm -hmm. And among the untouchables, I was the only person who was not interested in studying religion, mm -hmm. Hindu religion. Mm. But the two, Garib Das mm. uh, and Gyan Chan, were keen, and they were not admitted to the religious section. They were not admitted? Maybe because they were Dalit? Yeah. In our neighborhood, mm -hmm. there lived three British families. Okay. And there was one family, mm -hmm. Andrews, uh, A. A. Andrews, A. A. Alexander Andrews, Andrews. Okay. and uh, they took special care mm. to see that I speak correct English mm -hmm. and with good pronunciation. Mm -hmm. but they were missionaries who loved me very much, and while going to school and while going to the office, mm. I used to drop in there, and we read the Bible 
but they didn't they didn't ask me to embrace Christianity. But this uh, gentleman, uh, this lady, he looked at me in, uh, like parents of for about um, seven or ten years. So I was much influenced by them. In my family, mm. my father used to call him not Ambedkar. Baba Sahib. No, mm. Umidkar. Umidkar. Yeah, mm. the person who brought hope. Hope. Okay. He was very fond of it. Then he used to read uh, in the newspapers mm -hmm. uh, whatever was published about him. Mm -hmm. And he, he talked about it. Do you recall the names of any of those newspapers? What what were the what were the newspapers of that period? Riyasat. Riyasat. Milab. Milab. Madina. Uh -huh. And uh, Pratap. Pratap. And Zamindar. Did your father have a position on Gandhi as well? No. What did he think of Gandhi? Oh no, mm -hmm. Gandhi was not popular among our people. At all. Mm -hmm. Gandhi was not popular. Mm -hmm. It's only a few people in Simla who were Gandhian. So, when did you first see him, Baba Sahib? Well, I used to hear a lot about him mm -hmm. because of my father, mm -hmm. and also because of the meetings in Simla mm -hmm. and in the newspapers. Mm -hmm. Then he was appointed as a labor minister, mm -hmm. and. Labor Ministry was, Labor Department was mm. located in the Gorton Castle. Mm, mm. So I, I wanted to see him mm -hmm. and uh, I waited for seven hours mm. sitting outside. Mm. And his, one of his assistants said, Vachetov, Vachetov, man, Melayan Gayati. And Ambedka called me. Oh. Yes, catch I ah. Then I said in English, uh, I wanted to see you, uh -huh. and I'm employed as an accounts clerk in PWD, uh -huh. but I want to serve in your department. Uh -huh. Have you applied for it? He said, he spoke in English. Yes, I said, I applied for it, but I didn't get any reply. Uh -huh. That's all. Uh -huh. So he said, okay, we can go. And within 15 days' time, I got the appointment letter and I joined Miss of Labour. Where? In Shimla or in Delhi? In Delhi. In Shimla. In Shimla. Okay. Clearly, the following of Baba Sahib Ambedkar has increased after his death than during his lifetime. No. During his lifetime, uh, especially when he was Labour member, mm -hmm. I think his uh, polling increased, in spite of Gandhi, mm. in spite of Congress propaganda. He used to draw crowds. Uh, I'm saying so, because I, I was in Simla. Mm. And we had a very strong uh, unit mm. in favor of uh, Ambedkar. What was it called? What is it? Uh, well, it was uh, uh, later on called Shaded Class Federation. Federation. But, uh, in those days, uh, it was all over the Ambedkar. Mm -hmm. The organization was Ambedkar, right? Mm -hmm. Telegram Bedwan was the leader. Mm -hmm. And we, we talked about only Ambedkar mm -hmm. and his party and his movement. Uh, he had various schemes. He had various schemes in in the Ministry of Labour, in the Ministry of Labour, and uh, people had benefited because uh, they were undergoing training in uh, uh, armed forces. They were going, undergoing training in the civil uh, training centres, and uh, some people he had managed to send to England, and uh, and. Uh, 
they were undergoing training mm -hmm. and they came back and held very important positions. Mm -hmm. Ah, look at these pictures. It was an Air Force. And here are my colleagues. Where is this? It's, uh, this was taken in Jitub. Okay. On a holiday. I, I was employed in labor. Mm. And uh, the Hindu officers made my life miserable. Hindu officers, mm. okay. Why in, 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 uh, in that ministry. In what ways? Can you recall some of the incidents? In she, I used to reach office at about 9 o'clock. Okay. But they loaded me so with so much work mm. that I couldn't finish up to 7 o'clock. Okay. But my uh, other colleagues, mm -hmm. Mohammedans and Hindus, mm. they didn't have as much work to do. Mm. So uh, my life was made miserable, mm -hmm. so I left, I decided to leave. How long did you work there then? I worked there for a few months. That's all? Okay. And then I joined Air Force. What did you do in the Air Force? Uh, I wanted to be a pilot. But when I went to the uh, recruiting officer, mm -hmm. he said, no, it is not possible for me. Mm. To make you a but pilot. You, yeah. But you can join one of the technical jobs. Mm. So I said, uh, I'll join as a wireless operator. Mm. Mm. So he recruited me as a wireless operator. What is that? It's a war medal. Uh, this was the one issued there. Mm -hmm. Air Force. This is the color of the Air Force. Then I was recommended for commission. And uh, I was to go to England. But the trouble was that they wanted me to deposit 5,000 rupees. They, the order was you deposit 5,000 rupees, and you go to England, expenses will be borne by the Air Force. And you'll go on, uh, undergo training in, in England mm. uh, as a pilot. As a pilot. Mm. But I couldn't manage 5,000 rupees. You then I asked for release mm. and came back to Simla. You didn't want to continue to work as a radar operator? I do. Okay. But the salary mm. and staying separately mm -hmm. away from the family mm. was creating problems for me. When you were in the Air Force, were you known as the lead or scheduled cast or whatever, or were you hiding yourself? Because some passing, some people do that. No, I, I, I don't know. Uh, but Hindus didn't like me. Yeah. Because I take, uh, I took beef. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> Muslim didn't like me because I took pork and bacon. <laughs> Even today, I think probably uh, the elites are not very conscious of chronically collecting and chronicling your own history. Now that contrasts now to some extent with black. I mean, you can go and see these nice black history, black military history that they're very fascinated by. And there are lots of parallels here because it was a time when the elites played a ver very big role in the military. In the British military, and uh, even before that, I think in Shivaji's army, for instance. Was in the, so, you know, all this material gets, and the U.S. gets very much collected. Now, you've done some of this.
Well, I went back to Shimla and mm -hmm. found employment in the uh, Ministry of uh, uh, in the office of the Comptroller and Auditor General. I continued in that department for about uh, 14 or 15 years. In Shimla? No, in Shimla, of course, three years. Okay. Then in Delhi. Around the time of independence, what was the mood then? I mean, among especially the Dalit communities and... No, we were afraid. You were afraid? What was your fear? You see, because the general attitude of the Hindus mm -hmm. and the Muslims mm -hmm. was not very sympathetic. To? Towards us. Towards the Dalits, yeah. And uh, <coughs> in, in our neighborhood, there was a princely state. Mm -hmm where the atrocities were committed on uh, Kohli's and Shamar's. Mm -hmm. uh, one state which became notorious uh -huh. for killing innocent people uh -huh. was Dhami. Dhami, okay. Uh, it was only, what, four miles from us. Uh -huh. Most of the Hindu intellectuals and political leaders, mm -hmm. they talk very boldly mm. and uh, in favor of uh, many things, uh, such as equality and mm -hmm. freedom and mm -hmm. so on. Mm -hmm. But in, the, in, in everyday life, mm -hmm. they practice uh, untouchability mm -hmm. in some form or other. Mm -hmm. And uh, they never forgot uh, that mm -hmm. we were from the untouchable background. Mm -hmm. That hostility mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. But outwardly, they, they were mm. friendly. Mm -hmm. And uh, because of the partition, there was no fear of Muslims, mm -hmm. no fear of Christians. Mm -hmm. So they were, uh, they were independent, and uh, mm -hmm. it was a Hindu Raj. You couldn't even draw water from the tap. Mm -hmm. uh, and if we touched it, it, they used to come and wash it. Before. Where? Where was this? In Shimla? Shimla. Mm -hmm. They used to wash it uh, and then uh, switch it on. I mean, turn it, turn on. it on. So that was the day. And for barber, mm -hmm. no barber in my city, mm -hmm. cantonment area, mm -hmm. was prepared to cut my hair. So where would you get your hair cut? I used to go to Shimla. To the town? Town. And there were shops who didn't inquire about the caste. Mm -hmm. So I went to the Muslim shop, I went to the Hindu shop. Mm -hmm. They didn't inquire about the caste. Mm -hmm. They just cut the hair mm -hmm. and got money. When did you move to Delhi? Oh, after, yeah, yeah. in Delhi, yeah. office moved two or three years after independence. Okay, okay. Office was located in Kaputsala House, which mm -hmm. is on Manchin Road. Mm -hmm. I came across this man mm -hmm. because he used to pass that way mm -hmm. and uh, uh, saw me reading. Mm -hmm. And one day he found me reading. Who, who, who saw you reading? Shev Dyal Singh Chaurasia. Okay. He was a member of the Bakro Classes Commission. Okay. So he said, uh, uh, why are you reading this book? Mm. Um, Mitka's biography. Mm. I said, I belong to the untouchable community. Mm. Untouchable community? He said, come in. Mm. Because nobody would say. Mm -hmm. So he took me inside. He was from the Backward Classes Commission. Mm -hmm. He was to write a report, and he assigned me that job. What report was it? It was uh, not of uh, it was not of dissent uh, on Backward Classes Commission against the report which is uh, which is being submitted.
Was this the way it was, the entrance and all that? Well, the building was small. Okay. It had four or five rooms. Okay. And uh, almost all were full of books. I was taken by Mr. Chorasia to his residence. Mm -hmm. And uh, there he introduced, he said many things. And uh, I had a book in my hand written by uh, a British writer on Darwin. On Darwin. Hmm. You don't recall the author? I don't remember, but it was on, on Darwin. Okay. And he happened to see that book because I'd borrowed it from the library. Mm -hmm. Or purchased it from People's Publishing House because you used to go mm -hmm. to People's Publishing House. Mm -hmm. it's, a it's a communist uh, shop. I know. So he said, what's that book? I was surprised. But then I, I said, show me. Uh, I showed it. I knew that he has got a weakness for books. Mm. If it is not in his library, he might borrow it mm. and keep it. It would be difficult to get it back. Mm -hmm. uh, I said, show, I passed on the book. Well, you said, uh, it's written by, he mentioned a name, uh, who wrote uh, Survival of the Strongest Person. Well, uh, I heard, and I said, uh, you'll excuse me, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he didn't advocate this theory. Who? Uh, the writer. Um, I was talking about the writer. He okay. was talking about the writer. Uh. Oh, you said we, we wrote that book on survival of the strongest. Mm. And I said, you know, students say. Mm. What he wrote was that if some species fail to make adjustment with the changing environment, mm. they become extinct. Mm. Oh, yes, yes. Have you done PhD? Hmm. I said, no. After about 15 minutes time, he again put me this question. Have you done PhD? Hmm. I was surprised. I said, I've never been to any college. Hmm. And uh, I possess no degrees. Hmm. Oh, it doesn't matter. What matters is the knowledge and so on. Shall I take off? Yeah. What do you think of this whole ritual of removing chapels for this? Hmm? What do you make of this whole thing of removing chapels for I this? I don't know. Is this uh, necessary? It, Would Baba Sahib no, have come No. Uh, I, I used I used to enter his house and uh, I didn't have to remove my shoes. Ah. But, uh, but what has changed? Why are we being I, I think I think uh, it must have been they must have been influenced by Hindu uh, officers. Hindu officers. Mm. Ah. So, so this is a Hindu influence of oh. Yeah.
I used to go there and work there four, four days in a week. What was the nature of your work? He used to give me uh, to a subject and to find literature and references from the books in his library. And uh, if I came across something of interest outside, mm. I used to make a note and tell him that I came across this mm. stuff. Did you happen to meet his wife, Savita Bai? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Can you tell us something about it? She used to say, do you really belong to Shadil Kast? Mm. I mean, <laughs> she didn't so believe. Why would he ask that? Well, uh, because of my mannerism and uh, because of my command over the language uh -huh. and uh, my habits of reading. She's sitting here. about Buddhism uh, and uh, put a question to him. Mm. Uh, I said, Baba uh, you are very fond of Buddhism. I come from Himachal Pradesh and uh, we have a lot of Buddhists mm. uh, staying in uh, two districts. Uh, but I, I don't feel attracted because they practice untouchability and they have uh, Castism also. Within Buddhism? Yeah. So... So what was his reply? His reply was, for some time he kept quiet, and then he said, it won't happen now. Hmm. Okay. But you weren't convinced? And you didn't convert with him? Well, I, I embraced Buddhism after his death. A few days after his death. What changed your impression? My impression was changed after he embraced lakhs of people when he converted. So did you go to Nagpur when it happened? Uh, no, I didn't go. I, I went earlier and I went later. Uh, but I uh, found, uh, I mean, I read in the newspapers that lakhs of people had joined him in uh, Bombay and Nagpur and embraced Buddhism. Mm -hmm. And that was, uh, according to me, uh, it had never, never happened in mm -hmm. history mm -hmm. because nobody uh, among uh, religious uh, leaders, mm -hmm. um, say Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and Prophet Muhammad, nobody had been able to convert so, convert many, people. so many people. And uh, this was uh, a unique experience uh, in the in the in the history of world. After his death, mm. because I didn't want to die a Hindu, mm. I didn't want to be recognized as a Hindu. Mm. I couldn't, I could have embraced Christianity, but I didn't want to. Mm. I could have embraced Islam because partly my mother, mother was also half Muslim. But uh, then I thought Ambedkar chose, Ambedkar chose Amb Buddhism. Mm. So. After reading his books and literature, mm. I embraced book. I mean, embraced Buddhism, and uh, my marriage was also traumatized according to Buddhist right. Mm. 
Mr. Jorosia, he, he was in touch with the with an untouchable family in Lucknow, mm -hmm. and uh, they belonged to the Dhanuk caste. Dhanuk caste, okay. And there was a young lady in that community who who had done M.A. Mm -hmm. M.Ed. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what was his relation with that family or mm -hmm. what was it. But she came to sit for the I.S. examination. Okay, okay. And uh, he had advised them to come and stay with me. Mm. So they stayed with us mm -hmm. in the... What was the name of this woman? Rama Devi. Okay. Uh, she stayed with us mm -hmm. for two days mm -hmm. along with the brother mm -hmm. because the uh, brother had a company mm -hmm. there. She sat for the examination. Mm -hmm. But when during the talk, I talked about IS examination mm -hmm. and I, I talked about the general knowledge, mm -hmm. I found uh, she was lacking. She was lacking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And even though she had studied in, in, in very prominent colleges of Lucknow, of Lucknow. Okay. and Christian colleges, mm -hmm. And, and you had just done your matriculation and done your jobs here and there. You had not. No, I had not. You had not done any no. degree or no. anything. And you found her lacking in. Yeah. Hmm. And uh, then after some time, Chaurasia took me to Simla mm -hmm. to look now. Left now. Hmm. And I said, uh, How would you like to get married with that woman who visited you? Hmm. I said, I'm not prepared. I've got a large family to support. Mm. Your family had moved to Delhi by then? No. They were in Shimla? They were in Shimla. Mm. So, I didn't know that he had arranged the marriage. Mm -hmm. And in the six, uh, next day, uh, he, he took me to their residence. And Bhikkhu uh, from the Buddha center was present there. Mm -hmm. And this marriage was announced. But uh, your consent was not really taken? No. Your I found it awkward to uh, put his position in jeopardy. Mm -hmm. And other things and LLB. Oh, actually, well, that was an accident. Uh, did you have to enroll in a college or how did it happen? No, no, no. Just prepared at home. Okay. I didn't join any college. Uh, and then uh, after that BA, I did my MA and then I did LLB mm. from Delhi University and as a regular you? student. Okay. Three year course. I started practicing law uh, in uh, Tishwazari Court. In uh, I did it uh, for a few months mm -hmm. uh, on the criminal side, mm -hmm. but I didn't like the way uh, the lawyers work there. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, uh, we tried to please the clients. Mm -hmm. I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. I fixed my fee and uh, I wanted it. Whereas they, they got a lot of money mm. uh, by using means mm -hmm. which according to me they were not honest. Mm -hmm. What does that say, All India? All India Report, uh, 75, Alabad, Andhra Pradesh, and this is my name. So I joined as a junior mm -hmm. to Mr. P.P. Rao, who was my professor in the university. P.P. Rao. Mm -hmm. He had come to the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. So I joined as junior, mm -hmm. as his junior, and I worked for about five years with him. In India, 
after 1879, mm. there was mass conversion of sweepers mm. as Christians mm. in two districts. 1879. 1879 it Where started. Sialkot mm. and Gurdaspur. Mm. And the man who did it, his name was Dikta. 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 D I T T. Yeah. He yeah. belonged to this community. Uh -huh. But he worked as a salesman. Uh -huh. He went to frontier area uh -huh. with clothes mm -hmm. and cloth mm -hmm. for sale. Mm -hmm. And he came back there. So he he led this conversion. He was a Dalit himself. He was yeah. Okay. He belonged to the super community. But which missionary group worked with them? Oh, missionary group were against conversion of untouchables. They believed, I mean, especially people uh, in northern India, Punjab and UV, they believed that if upper caste people are converted to Christianity, mm. the lower caste people will come automatically. Mm. This is what they, so they emphasize mm. on conversion of upper caste people. Mm. And there was poor response mm. because upper caste people, very few did it for religion, mm. but many did for better jobs. Mm. Mm. So it didn't work, mm. uh, it didn't make much progress. Mm. But then when Ditta embraced Christianity, mm. there was a Christian missionary mm. who thought why not concentrate on that? Mm -hmm. And he was a friend of Ditta, who mm -hmm. converted Ditta. Mm -hmm. When Ditta approached him, he gave him the Bible, mm -hmm. and he said, you come after reading it. Mm -hmm. And this Ditta, mm -hmm. he went to him after a month mm -hmm. with family mm -hmm. to embrace Christianity. Mm -hmm. He was surprised. But then both husband and wife went inside the room, mm -hmm. prayed to God, mm -hmm. came out, and then converted him, mm -hmm. baptized him. Mm -hmm. This is Valmiki. Uh, but since when did Very start recent, to recent yeah. adoption uh, by these people. The so-called Valmiki, who was once upon a time, Lalvegi. Lalvegi. Yeah. She... This is what? Yeah. This book says. Yeah. I'll show you. This is 1869. Okay. 1891, census of 1891. Yeah. Yeah. Distribution of Bhangis according to the census of yeah, 1891. 1891. Now, this is. This is the Balmiki. Okay. What is the population? 6,105. 6, what is the population of the Lalbegi? 1,63,751. Yeah. And these, these people, uh. the, these uh, Helas and Helas uh, and, and, and so on, uh, they, their population is very small. Very small. But then, uh, when they started converting and embracing Christianity. Yeah. The Hindu Mahasabha and others got active. Yeah. Hindu leaders became more interested in checking that conversion. Yeah. Because that will bring them closer to the uh, European government. Yeah. And also uh, the, the Hindus will be, lost, uh, will be losing their population. So they, they carried on the propaganda to keep them within the Hindu fold. And uh, this Valmiki was introduced. And, uh, and the myth uh, that it was the, the, the myth that Valmiki is the author of Ramayana yeah. and you belong to that yeah. caste. You, 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 oh, he was their guru uh -huh. and so on. And so uh, now the Lalbegi population has come down? And you indeed. Lalbegis are a few thousand now. So they've all become Valmikis? Mm.
see, because the, the, in city life, you exercise a lot of pressure, because most of them are employed in the local bodies, municipal committees, cantonment boards, station staff officer, army, and so on. So when, if you keep them backward, they will stick to this occupation, and uh, uh, they will not move out. And because of the caste feeling, they will not pay attention to the other leaders who are speaking. What was Gandhi's position on Gandhi's uh, position was uh, anything that weakens Hinduism is bad. It was all right when he said abolish untouchability and so on. But at the same time, he said, especially addressing the sweepers, don't give up this work. Mm. Now, this is a contradiction. Mm. And don't give up Hinduism, mm. because this will lead you to a better world in your, in your next birth. Mm. Mm. So, this somehow mm. didn't appeal to the untouchables. Mm. Mm. It didn't appeal. Mm. And uh, he also said that you don't embrace Christianity. He wanted to promote Hinduism mm. without getting rid of casteism. Mm. Mm. He said, four Varnas are very important. Mm. Yes, but four Varnas, how about 1,500 castes? Mm. This is what his emphasis was. Yeah. If he's born in a particular caste, mm. Ambedkar said, mm. will he change it? Mm. A, a, a Varna. Mm. So Gandhi's replies mm. were, not very satisfactory mm. and not uh, answering the question raised mm. by Ambedkar. Mm. Ambedkar said he gave up this occupation yes. and uh, he gets educated and accept better jobs. And then he said, no, you don't give up this occupation. <laughs> so they were very, very different. Yeah. Yeah. That, uh, that enlightened me. Yeah. And and one reason why the sweepers have become backward and made little progress is because of Gandhi's teachings and Gandhi's influence. Mm. have made more progress. Mm. Maharaj have made more that, progress. That happened, yes. But, but, I... the, but the Bhangis, the sweepers, in scavengers, they have made little progress because of Gandhi's interference. So this was the first collection you put together. And when was this? Let's see. It doesn't say much about the year, 12 rupees. All these simultaneously? Mm. This was 63. 63? Ah. VK Gaikwad had written the foreword. Mm. How did you how did you team up with Bali? You put the editorial inputs into it and he published it or what was the what was the work like? How did you do the collection? Well, I had been keeping clippings okay. in my own house. Okay. But then I, I also collected... Newspaper clippings? A number of papers. Okay. And then I had been collecting from uh, the, uh, the Delhi Public Library mm -hmm. and the Central Secretariat Library. So I collected a lot of speeches from there. Mm. And then I got some matter from Parliament House. Mm -hmm. I purchased things mm -hmm. published by them, mm -hmm. the reports, mm -hmm. and collected the speeches of Dr. Ambedkar, mm -hmm. which he delivered in Parliament. Mm -hmm. So that way I collected it, and I brought four volumes mm -hmm. of the spoke Ambedkar. And these were brought out by Bhim Patrika? Yes, okay. early stages okay. were brought out by Bhim Patrika. Bhim Patrika.
ये जो दी ओल्ड फ्रेंड थी अब बेज वन प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ रिपब्लिकन पार्टी हिमाचल प्रदेश और एडिटर भी हैं पत्रिका एंड बायोग्राफर ऑफ प्रोफेसर प्रोफेसर एलेन और जेलियट प्रोफेसर मार्क गैलेंट लॉ स्कूल मेडिसिन प्रोफेसर एल्डर एंड प्रोफेसर फ्रिकेनबर्ग ऑफ विस्कॉन्सिन सो ऑल दिस पीपल आर बीन एक्नॉलेज नो यू सी आई वाज इनवाइटेड बाय I mean, uh, after I went to the UNO uh -huh. and I gave it, uh, I mean, presented a paper, mm -hmm. a delivery speech. When was this? Oh, I don't remember. You don't remember. Okay. And what did you say in that? Oh, a lot of things. Untouchability uh -huh. of Asia. Uh -huh. It covered a lot of fields. समाज बदल गया क्या तब से बदल तो बहुत ज्यादा गया हाँ। बहुत ज्यादा बदल गया लेकिन जातिवाद अब ऐसा होगा ना कि हमारे लोग तो चले गए बहुत आगे वो लोग आगे पीछे कि वो जो सतयुग था ना अब है हमारे लिए सतयुग वो कलयुग था वो कलयुग वो कलयुग था अब सतयुग है तो इसीलिए तो अभी तो बहुत बदल गया जमाना हम तो बहुत आगे लेकर गए साहब बार बार चले गए आगे ले भाई ले ले बहुत अगे चले गए साहब आदर अब बल्कि हम लोग शूट करते हैं उनसे आप लोग करते हो हम करते हैं कैसे करते हैं यानी अगर वो कहते भी आप पानी पी रहे मैंने कहा मैं पीकर आया अब नहीं पिया वो मैंने कहा पानी चाय में कहा नहीं पिया अब आप दूसरे जाति में शादी कर रहे हैं आपके जाति से दो लड़के हमारे तो शर्मा का शर्मा किसी ने कम्प्लेन करी होगी ना तब केवल ठीक करने आए थे तब बस मैं बाहर खड़ी थी हाँ। ऐसे ही पूछ लिया था फिर उन्होंने आपका नाम क्या है क्या करते हैं बस ये तो सिनेमा जैसा लग रहा है <laughs> तो मम्मी ने बोला कि तो भेजा लेगी उनके घर में हाँ। तो मैंने बोला तो क्या हुआ हाँ। वो कौन सा अलग है जैसे वो है वैसे हम में हाँ। तो मम्मी ने मुझे मारा अब ठीक ठाक है सर हाँ जी अब तो फाइव ईयर्स हो गए हाँ जी हाँ जी नाम क्या लड़का वंश नहीं कम्युनिटी की बात नहीं है दिल की बात होती है जिसको वो तो कोई और भी होगा जिसको अच्छा लगेगा वही खाएगा ना हमारे घर में तो रोज हाँ जी भाई ना आपका दिल नहीं करता तभी तो आप खाते नहीं हो कोई बताते हैं हाँ मजहबी रीजन नहीं है धार्मिक हाँ रीजन नहीं है पसंद की बात What's the use of just living? I made it two already, okay. and by the time I reach uh, 83, I think I will have uh, no energy left uh, because I say this. What are the What are the books you're writing, working yeah, on right that's now? Yeah, that's what that's what I want to complete. Yeah. What are, What are the What are the works you are attempting right now? Now, one one thing that I told you about untouchability in Asia. Asia. Yeah. That is a Last book that I'm working on. Okay. But then uh, I have one. I have I have mm, I've written 23 books already. Okay. I have always advocated voluntary retirement and voluntary killing because it's no use uh, being a burden to other people. Nobody sees. And especially people. in my family, uh, my son is the only person who is most of the time busy. 
and uh, I do not want to be a burden to him. His family is in America, and he might go to America. And there is nobody in the family, or in my community, or among the Shadow caste, who is come to help me. So I, as soon as I finish my work, because I'm collecting a lot of information from libraries and other places, so as soon as I complete this work, uh, I, I'll, I'll have no desire to live.